Last year, one of my most successful videos was looking at the cheapest Chromebook that I could find, which was a free Chromebook that Samsung was giving away with their phones. Uh, well, they're doing it again, so we're going to have another look at this. But this time, we're going to install Linux. So last time, we kind of took a deep dive into this Chromebook, the Samsung Galaxy Go Chromebook, which is actually kind of a family of Chromebooks. It's all very confusing. The one that I'd been sent last time uh, for free with a new phone was their 11 inch model. And frankly, it was pretty terrible. We did a couple of different videos trying to do different things with it, and it really didn't work very well. Well, one of the things that several people on those videos kind of mentioned was, why not install Linux? And it's a good point, why not? Especially considering that that is what we do on this channel. Um, smash operating systems into devices that maybe aren't supposed to be running them. And I'd never really installed full Linux on a Chromebook, and I'm not talking about using the Linux subsystem, I mean actually removing Chrome OS and installing Linux instead of it. Well, I actually kind of got rid of that Chromebook pretty quickly after I'd finished recording with it, because it was kind of useless to me. The 11 inch screen was terrible, the bezels were massive, the thing was bulky for the size of the screen, uh, and so I gave it away to someone because, yeah, I did not need that in my life. However, I picked up a new Samsung Fold 7 a little while ago, and they sent me this thing, which is the 14 inch version. It's still quite big for a 14 inch computer, uh, but it might actually be a little bit more practical. It's basically the same specs. It's got a Celeron processor with two cores, two threads, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. It's pretty terrible, but can we install Linux on this, remove Chrome OS and make it an actual usable, lightweight, low powered Linux machine? Let's take a look. I will also say, excuse the mess around me, I'm in the middle of packing slash unpacking for a house move. So a little bit chaotic at the moment, but nonetheless, yeah, here we are. And if you do enjoy this video, please do hit that like button and subscribe. I still have the goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm not sure we're gonna reach that, but let's see how close we can get. Okay, so to do this, we're gonna use this website I found called mrchromebox.tech, which has a pretty good in-depth guide on getting rid of Chrome OS and installing alternative OSs, whether that's Windows or Linux. In this case, we're gonna be installing Linux, specifically Xubuntu. I think XFCE is gonna be a really good Windows desktop manager, uh, desktop environment for this very lightweight computer. And the goal here is, yeah, to make a usable computer out of this that isn't just a stripped down, dodgy web browser with quite a lot of overhead, really. So we're gonna follow this guide, uh, it's quite, in depth and there's definitely things that can go wrong um, so we're going to take it very slow uh, and uh, yeah we'll see where we get to there's a lot of kind of prerequisites it's got to have a x86 platform of course it can't be arm based uh, which is fine we do have a x86 processor uh, you need to go through and find your hardware id and all these sorts of things flash drive for the uh, system um, basically this is the tldr to go through and figure it all out. So yeah, let's get the Chromebook set up and uh, see where we need to go. So this is the Chromebook in question. Annoyingly, it doesn't quite fit with my camera here. Uh, like I say, working a little bit cramped conditions at the moment. Once the move is done, I am gonna have a dedicated desk for- Do you want to activate oh, Chromebox? The no, I don't, screen go away. Uh, I am gonna have a dedicated desk for filming, which is gonna be really nice. But for now, we're kind of cramped in here. Sorry about that. But anyway, let's just see if we can there you go. So one thing to notice is that, yes, this is the 14 inch screen um, and it does have much smaller bezels if you compare it to that model we looked at last year. Uh, it's not a bad little computer, I don't think, like in terms of physically. You've got two USB-C ports, you've got a USB-A port, and you've got a micro SD card slot as well. So you kind of have some expandable storage. And just, yeah, generally it's not bad. Okay, we got into recovery. <coughs> in the end, which is which is good. This is what we need. I think down here is what we're looking for, this model number here, I think. Yes, so this is Suzuki. I think that's our board number, which is what we need. Um, and thankfully, it is supported, so we can go ahead. So next up, we need to disable the write protection on this laptop. So at 
by standard, there's write protection with Chrome OS, which means you cannot overwrite it. Thankfully, it's quite easy to disable that. Actually, all you have to do is remove the battery, or at least unplug it, um, and then you just power via USB while you're doing your stuff, and then plug it back in. So let's flip this over and uh, remove that battery. Thankfully, as we saw with the uh, 11 inch version, taking this apart is actually very, very easy. These just pop out and they aren't stuck down. They are actually popped in. So you'll be able to put them back. And there are just a couple of Phillips head screws underneath to remove. Okay, we got in. I will say that was uh, possibly one of the worst laptops I've had to try and get into. Uh, the clips were incredibly strong. And because it's not just the bottom, it's actually the lip all the way around, like the actual case. Uh, and there isn't really any metal, or well, there's, a, I guess, a little bit of metal in here, but <clears throat> you're basically prime plastic on plastic. Uh, that was painful. And I have kind of, I don't know if you can see that. Come on, focus on the damage. No, it's not going to focus, but I have done, a, there we go. I have done a little bit of damage to the pry points as well, which is annoying, but such is life. Uh, you shouldn't have to see it when it's done, uh, but at least we did get it off. Still, the 11 inch was so much easier to get into. This is, that was frustrating, which is why I didn't do it on camera. Um, but this is our insides and our insides are, are mainly a battery. Uh, this is essentially the motherboard here uh, with our CPU. Um, and then we've got a little daughter board here with our, some of our IO as well. Um, yeah, and that's kind of it. So essentially we need to disconnect this battery and then we should be able to power it from mains and um, yeah, we should be good to go. So this is our battery ribbon cable here and there's a little plate that holds it on. But if we just remove that, we are now disconnected. Um, obviously we could take the whole battery out, but I, I imagine, I don't know, but I imagine it is glued down. So I don't really want to worry about that. Uh, but there we go, battery disconnected. I'm going to get a very sophisticated and just pop the case back kind of resting on it. I do not want to actually push the clips back in because I need to be able to get back in there to connect the battery again. So yeah, we're going to just kind of rest it here and we're going to plug it in and that should be right protection now removed. Yep, so it's booting up automatically. So we do have USB power running, which is great. Um, yeah, okay, so next up, we need to go ahead and enable developer mode. So to do that, we go back into recovery mode, which is holding down escape, refresh, and the power key. And then from here, we need to press control D, and this will enable developer mode and then we can confirm that and it's going to then wipe the device anyway so that's why I really didn't want to have to set it all up to wipe it <laughs> um, and this will take a little while so we will um, do that. Jeez well that took forever I think uh, the Chrome OS setup process gives Windows 11 a run for its money. Right so I should be able to open a terminal and then we can run the Mr. Chromebox firmware utility, which will basically allow us to back up our firmware and install the new firmware. We have our terminal open, so now we need to drop into a shell. And from here, we're going to run the firmware utilities from Mr. Chromebox. As always, of course, you definitely should check the contents of a file before you run it on your machine. Uh, it's a trusted source, so I'm not too worried, but this is your reminder to not do as I do and do check the contents of any bash file before you run it. So it does still say that firmware write protection is actually enabled, which is a little odd. All right, we're going freehand mode. So yeah, here is the battery connector here. I can focus. And uh, it's very much disconnected. Uh, this is where it connects to. This is the battery. There is jumper pads over here, but if we bridge should disable write protection. Um, it's a little annoying. I was hoping I would not have to do that. So, uh, but we'll give that a go and we'll see what happens. What I missed was just here, there was a little bit of conductive tape. Well, I peeled off that tape and I popped it over the two pads and lo and behold, right protection disabled. So you do need to jump the pads on this machine. Uh, but yeah, actually do, they do provide you with what you need to do that, which is kind of cool. Uh, so uh, thank you, Samson. All right, 
now let's get back into the software. All right, so let's power it up and we should now be able to do this. The other thing that happened while I was messing around with that, because it took me an embarrassing long time to realize that that tape was there, uh, is the Chromebook has now updated itself to a newer version of Chrome OS, which means we need to use a special terminal to be able to get sudo access. So we're still in developer mode and we'll boot up to the login screen. And then from here, we need to do control alt F2, which is the forward arrow on this keyboard to bring us to a developer console. Um, and then from here, we log in with the user Kronos. And this gives us a access to a root user, basically. Um, so you can set the password. There isn't one by default. Um, so all is good here, really. Um, and this is like the actual developer environment. So from here, we can actually then run this command that we've been trying to run before that didn't work and it will run this time which is good and then it'll do all the normal system detection stuff and most importantly our write protection is now disabled excellent so we're going to install update uefi full rob firmware uh, because i want to get rid of chrome os completely so we'll press number two and uh, we'll go through this So now it wants us to take a backup, which we will do using a USB drive. And it's found the drive. And it is taking a firmware backup. So we can reflash the old firmware later on if we wanted to. And it looks like we are done. So we can return to the main menu and we can get our lovely Exubuntu install medium and we'll plug that in. And uh, let's see if when we reboot, if uh, we boot into that. If that all works, then I'll put this thing back together. And there we go, we are booting into Exabuntu. Ah, oh, awesome. Okay, so this is the install media. Um, so you've seen me install Ubuntu, <laughs> I'm sure, many times at this point. So I'm gonna get everything installed and I will see you in a minute. And we are installed and all set up. We have Exabuntu running, no problem at all on this Chromebook. Completely wiped Chrome OS, it's just running. Exabuntu now. You know, it's only got 64 gigabytes of storage anyway, so definitely wanted to just have Linux on here. Uh, but we do have that SD card slot as well, so I've got a 256 gigabyte card that I've just plopped in that micro SD card slot. It sits nice and flush with the system, so it can just sit there and I can dump files onto it as and when I need to, which is kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, it's we got a fully functioning to an extent. There is one thing that isn't working, which for some people would be a deal breaker, and that is audio. Unfortunately, audio just isn't working. It's not detecting the audio, the speakers in this whatsoever. Uh, this is kind of a known issue, I think, with this CPU, this setup, which is a shame, and I'm sure there are ways to fix it. But for me personally, uh, I'm not gonna be using this to consume media. It would literally just be to have a Linux machine to do Linux things. So audio really isn't an issue. But if we do just wanna check, like, some basic kind of performance stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, the internet is running fine, but again, if what you want to do with this type of computer is go on the internet, stick to Chrome OS. That's the one thing it can do. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, look, there we go. Oh, here's the 
previous video. Nonetheless, uh, the playback is perfectly fine. We're at full HD here, um, and it is working just as I would expect with no issues at all. Again, without the audio, of course. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this in terms of sort of video playback if I ever need that. Uh, another good metric that we often do on this channel is a little bit of light gaming just to see how that's going. So let's try Minecraft and see what it's like. Okay, we are running Minecraft and it's it's running okay. It's definitely running better than it was when we tested it out on the other Chromebook running Linux within Chrome OS, which makes sense because, you know, this is not using anywhere near as much system resources to make that happen. Uh, that was running at like seven frames per second. A slightly weird thing, the top row of keys isn't a func aren't function keys here. They're like shortcut keys. And I can't get that to remap to actually work as function keys, which means I can't press F1, which means I can't open up to the menu and actually see what frames per second we're getting here. But it's definitely better than we experienced in the other Chromebook. It's still not amazing though. So again, we're not gonna use this for gaming. It just shows that if you wanna get every little bit of performance out of this, it's better to run Linux on the actual hardware instead of having to run Linux within Chrome OS and kind of all the actual co compatibility stuff that goes on there. Um, because yes, Chrome OS is based on Linux, but it's kind of very stripped down, customized and everything else. So there's there's a lot going on to then run Linux applications in Chrome OS. And yes, I'm sure because someone was bound to want to know, Half-Life 2 is running pretty decently actually here as well. You know, we're getting above 40 FPS, which again is probably nearly double the FPS we were getting when we tried running Half-Life 2 in the Linux environment under Chrome OS. So yeah, again, I would say kind of playable to be fair. It's uh, not dipping below 40 as far as I can tell. Okay, there's a little of a dip there when there's some action on the screen, but generally speaking, pretty playable, uh, which again, for a free laptop, it is pretty good going. And I'm gonna get eaten by a head crab. Ah. Well, there we have it. There is this uh, pretty rubbish Chromebook in turned into a kind of actually handy Linux machine. I don't actually currently have a Linux laptop. I have Linux servers, I have Linux desktop, I have Linux random devices, but I don't have a Linux laptop. My current laptop is a MacBook. So yeah, I actually will find some good use for this. And it's great to see that even with such a lockdown operating system like Chrome OS, there are ways around it and you can turn these computers into pretty reasonable uh, machines, especially considering this was free. This was included as part of a deal of buying a phone by Samsung. So yeah, as a free device, this is brilliant. And this is going to get a lot of use. It's got decent battery life. I haven't tested the battery life, but uh, it, it reports when I'm doing stuff around five hours battery. So that's pretty good going and I'm happy with that. So yeah, all in all, there we go. If you're looking to revitalize a Chromebook, whether it's an older Chromebook that you have lying around, or maybe you got one of these free ones from buying a phone just like me. It seems to be a deal they do quite regularly. Uh, yeah, there are ways. You could go as far as even to install Windows on it if you really wanted to. I think Linux is a much better option here because it's much more lightweight. But nonetheless, very happy, very impressed that this could do it. I hope this video is useful and uh, you've enjoyed it. All right, I'll see you again for another video very, very soon. Bye for now.